Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Pastor Michael Salomon, and uh, today I'd like to talk to you about the uh, age-old question, are you saved? Are you saved? In other words, uh, for those of you who are uh, not Christians, maybe just listening to the video, the question would be is, are you going to heaven or are you saved? And uh, what does it mean to be saved? So I pray we're going to answer these questions uh, in this session. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to be taking a text out of the New King James Version uh, in there. And um, this is very important that we do understand something as we discuss uh, the subject of are you saved? <clears throat> if you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, um, uh, no matter what your stance and what your belief system is, it's very important that in no way, in no way is there, uh, are we trying or I am trying to place any other burden than, than what Christ has already placed uh, in our lives. In the sense that uh, the Bible says, come unto me all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy <clears throat> and my burden is light. So there is a burden following God, and there is a yoke, but the yoke is easy and the burden is light. In comparison to the burden and the yoke that sin offers and the world offers, um, this, his yoke and his burden are extremely light. So I think a person would have to ask themselves is, why am I a Christian? Why am I a Christian? Why do, why do I need to believe in Christ? Why am I why do I want to be a Christian? Why do I want to be saved? Why do I want to go to heaven? You know, these are all questions you want to ask yourself. Why are you a Christian? Um, is it because you, you know, you just need to be? You feel like you have to be? Um, because uh, you, one thing that we need to understand is, is the scriptures make it very clear that many are called, but few are chosen. So uh, again, I in no way want to d d make put any doubt in your mind or anything, but I think with so many gospels out there, with so much, uh, so many theologies out there on salvation, what it takes to be saved, um, I think it's very important that you as a person uh, understands what is God actually calling someone to do? Um, you know, I've, I've preached for many, many years. I continue to preach. Uh, I go out to the streets. I preach out in the streets to people. I talk to them about Jesus Christ. And uh, one thing, one thing I have uh, found is that a lot of people come to me and they say to me, well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I remember when I was younger uh, in Christ, a young evangelist, I used to say, that's okay. We'll pray for you and God will make you ready. But um, that, that theology was an error. That was very much an error uh, because if a person is truly not ready to give up their sin, and give up their life of sin, then they shouldn't by no means have the uh, false assurance of saying that they are a Christian or they are saved. So that's very important that that uh, there are prerequisites to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But again, the point comes down to is why do you want to be saved? I mean, do you want to, why do you want to go to heaven? Why do you want to be saved? Oh, well, I don't want to go to hell. That's why I want to be saved. Well, that's good. But do you really not want to go to hell? Do you really understand the consequences of hell, do you? Um, because hell is, is for eternity. Uh, and hell is a place of torment. And I don't want to go to hell. But more than that, um, I, don't wanna, I, wanna, I don't wanna live in hell now. I mean, not that eternity. I don't wanna live in hell in eternity, I don't. But my goodness, you know, living a life without Jesus Christ now is, is like hell. Um, and the gospel, of course, is not kind of to say if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going you're gonna to have peace, love, and all that stuff for the rest of your life. But you know what? Hell doesn't, doesn't have to begin at death. Uh, outside of Christ, it can begin now. Okay. So nonetheless, let's go to the Bible. And, and uh, what I like to do is I'm going to bring out just some scriptures. We're going to go out to, to uh, Matthew chapter 10 and uh, ask yourself, am I a Christian? Am I saved? So what does Jesus say uh, about uh, wanting to be saved or a person wanting to come to Christ? Say, for example, I want to be a Christian and I want, I want Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, let's take a look at, um, uh, let's take a look at uh, Matthew chapter, uh, let's see here, I'll bring it up a little, a little bit closer here. Uh, I guess it would be Matthew chapter 10, 
verse uh, 32. Um, here we go. All right. Jesus says, therefore, whosoever confesses me before men, him I will confess also before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Okay, this is, this is tough because, um, I'm sorry, and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. This is tough because a lot of people don't realize that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of things, things that people find important, but to you they're not important, okay? Uh, maybe they're special holidays, special traditions, family traditions, or so, so forth, and people aren't going to like you. You know, your, your mom is going to be like, well, you know, it's your brother's birthday or your, you know, your uncle's, uh, you know, come in, we're going to be drinking and all that. And you're going to be like, no. And, and you're, going to under, you're not going to understand that that's going to cause a wedge between these relationships that you've had. Um, it says even a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Um, folks, I want you, as we're reading this, to understand this is contrary to what is, what is normally being preached out there. They're saying that, oh, you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You know, you need to be loved by everyone. Your family's going to love you. You need to please your family. You need to please your wife. You need to please your children. And you need to compromise. And you need to go ahead. And, you know, this is contrary. Jesus Christ says, he says, I've come to set these against each other, you know, against a father, a daughter against her mother-in-law, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, you know, that a man's enemies will be of his own household. These are, these, this is strong, folks. Okay, let's look at verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay. Um, you know, what does that mean? You know, I, I've known a lot of people who, who um, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they still put family first. They still put family first. They, uh, they miss church. They don't go, they don't read their Bible. They miss, you know, when you ask, why haven't you been at church? What's going on? Oh, we had a family thing going on, or, oh, my mom, or my dad, or my children, or my whatever it is, uh, you know, a family, family, oh, we had a family thing. Well, you know what? You're not worthy of him. Listen, if you love your son or daughter, you love your mother or father, you love your relatives. In other words, if you love your family more than him, you're not worthy of him. You know, so you may say, well, I'm a Christian. I put family first before church. I, you know, and, and you know, you can't separate. You can't say that the church is nothing. The church is the body of Christ. And it is, it is the church that God is coming back for. So if you miss church, you miss God. God does, God and the church are together. There's, there's a, there's a unity together. It is not separate. There's not God and there's a church and church. No, it's God and the church. God is coming back for his church. So if you don't go to church, you don't, you have no part with God. If you put your family first, you're not worthy of God. Okay. And he who does not take his cross and follow me, follow after me is not worthy of me. Okay. Um, you know, uh, just again, to, to understand that if you don't take a cross, what's a cross? Well, you know, there, again, like I said, there's a lot of sacrifices. There are a lot of things that you're going to have to give up and crucify for Jesus Christ. And if you don't do those, you're not worthy of Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people don't understand taking the cross, uh, giving up some of the flesh and giving up some of the things in your life. Jesus says, you're not worthy of me. Um, he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. I've had people come to me and say to me, oh, well, I need to know who I am and what I'm all about before I can come to church. Or, or I need to, God says, you're going to lose yourself. Guys, this is very, very strong. And you cannot come to Jesus Christ and be worthy of Jesus Christ if you love your father, mother, your family, all these. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you're, you're just saying that because you're a pastor or you're saying that because you're a pastor, you're a teacher or whatever it is. You know, I am a pastor and I love God's church and not because I'm a pastor. I'm sorry. I love God's church, not because I'm a pastor. I love God's church because I understood through scripture that you cannot separate the body of Christ from Christ. You cannot separate 
love for the brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ with God. There's no separation. God puts church and him together. And he puts the love of the body and him together and the love of the brethren together. That if you separate them and put something else like a family or job or whatever it is before church, you are committing idolatry. I am a strong believer of that, that you are committing sin and you are not worthy of Jesus Christ because your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, your family are more worthy and you are willing to sacrifice and to give up things that God calls you to, to not, you know, to, uh, to give up and you're not giving them up. I'm sorry. You're not giving them up. Uh, you're not worthy. Now, a lot of people go, well, that seems like a very harsh gospel. You know, that just seems very tough. But this is what Jesus said. It's not what I said. It's what he says. And, and let's read on. You know, uh, there's no reason for for me uh, um, just to, you know, for you just to take my word for it. OK, uh, it's very important uh, to understand the whole text on this. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and go to Matthew chapter 19 and take a look at how Jesus deals with maybe some of the people uh, who come to him for salvation. Uh, I think that that's going to be the greatest evidence. Um, forget about what I say, you know, uh, forget about what anyone thinks, but let's again, go back to text, the scripture. Okay. It says, now behold, one came and said to him, and this is Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Okay, so, so Jesus, this man is asking, what must I do pretty much to be saved? And he says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments, okay? This is, this is strong because these days, we don't say that. We're like, oh, you want eternal life? Come here. Let's pray together. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. That, folks, is not biblical, okay? That's not how it works, okay? That's accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior are not just words muttered and or uttered without the true deaf feeling of the heart, okay? So he says, and he said to him, which ones, Jesus said, and, or, and which ones? So Jesus said, you shall not murder, shall not commit adultery, thou shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So these are important to Jesus Christ. And you're like, well, look, it says honor your father and your mother. That's right. It does. But not more than God. Okay. Not more than God. And if you honor your father and your mother more than God, again, you're not worthy of him and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And again, these are not more than God. You know, uh, you, a person I've heard people say, well, I didn't go to church because I had to uh, help my neighbor move and I had to help someone move and I had to help someone out and uh, I couldn't do it, you know, and or whatever it is, sorry, you know, and I could understand emergencies and things like that. But what an excuse, because again, this is again, is you, God didn't tell you to put anything before him, but here it says, do all these things. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Okay. What else do I need to do? So Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come and follow me. So Jesus is asking this man to go sell what he's got. Why is he telling that? Maybe this man, his heart is for the riches, his hearts and riches. But Jesus is telling him to do something. He didn't say to him, oh, you're saved. You're good. He says, go and sell and follow me. How many times do Jesus tell people, go give up what you're doing. Give up your sin. Give up your, your stuff and follow me. And they don't. It says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And then Jesus said, I say to you, that it is easier, hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to get, go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter to the kingdom of God. And when his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said with them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. So Jesus did not accept this rich man. He did not tolerate the rich man's behavior or the rich man's uh, attitude. You know, he told the rich man, if you do not go and sell all you have, you cannot follow me. 
you will not be saved. And the man went away sorryful. Guys, when we preach, brothers, sisters, when we preach, are we preaching this? Or are we telling people, oh, don't worry about it. Just come on and follow. If you follow him, he'll be okay. You know, you'll learn. No, you can't. You got to give it up. You got to give it up to follow Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, some people say, well, what if I can't give it up? Well, if you can't give it up, you're not worthy of him. And some of you go, well, I'm trying to give it up. Well, trying is good. If this young man said, okay, Lord, I am going to do, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to surrender what I have, Lord, and I'm going to follow you. Will Jesus Christ have helped this man go through it? I believe the answer is yes. Absolutely, he would help him. But this man went away sorryful because he did not want to do, he did not want to give up what was more precious to him than God. All right, let's take a look at Luke uh, chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 um, is another story on with Jesus and, and uh, him talking to the people here. There we go. And again, like I said, uh, is this what you were taught? Because forget about what people preach and teach versus what is what does the scriptures actually say? Because the scriptures are going to give us the most clearest of um, definitions of salvation. Okay, the most clearest of definitions of salvation. Okay, the cost of discipleship. I think they headed this pretty well. Okay, now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Is this you? I know it was me. And I said, Lord, I want to follow you wherever you go. Okay, I wanted to follow God. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. So, so what does that mean? It means I need to come to God with no, with no preconceived ideas or preconceived intentions or motives. Like, for example, Lord, I'll follow you if you give me this job or if you give me this woman or if you give me this man. Lord, I'll follow you if you provide for me uh, such and such. Jesus says no. Foxes have old, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere. In other words, if you're going to follow God, you're going to have to believe in Him, trust in Him, and follow Him blindly without understanding, just trusting in Jesus Christ and trusting in Him. Amen? So if you're coming to God, if you came to Christ with some preconceived idea or preconceived motive, like, Lord, if, you, if, you, if I follow Jesus Christ, I'll be wealthy, no way. Okay? Then He said to another, follow me. So here Jesus says to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go bury, go and bury my father. Look at what Jesus' reply was. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the, their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Wow. That right there is, is, uh, is awesome. Because again, Jesus didn't accept this man right away. He says, no. He says, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. You preach the kingdom of God. In other words, give that all up. Okay. The man wanted to bury his father. In other words, he wanted to take care of his household. He, he said, Lord, let my, let my, I want to respect my dad. I want, I don't want to follow you. I need to respect my dad. I want to follow you, but I need to respect my dad first and go bury my father. And Jesus says, no way. Let the dead bury that you preach come after me. Okay. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. This is awesome. So again, the man is putting his household first. He's putting his stuff first. Let me, all this man was asking was a simple plow or a simple thing. I'm going to jump it up, jump into conclusion. A simple thing. Hey, let me just go say bye to everyone. Okay. Let me give my, get my last drink. Let me do my last smoke. Let me do my, my last drug or my last thing or my last sex or my last alcohol or whatever. Jesus like, Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. What a revelation, folks. This is completely different than what is preached in churches these days, that is preached on television, on, on this so-called love gospel. 
And the gospel is love. Don't get me wrong that there is the love for God of God in the gospel and that Jesus Christ died for our sins. But this other gospel that's being preached that comes around and goes, come as you are and Jesus accepts you just as you are is completely wrong. Jesus does not accept you just as you are. Jesus calls you to repent of your sins and come in that sense, not just as you are, but just as you want to be. You want to say, God, I forgive me of my sins. I repent. I don't want to be that same old person anymore. I don't want sin anymore. I want to follow you and not look back. And the person, Bible says he who looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. That's in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, another, another text here. I got these in notes because just, there is just so many. I want to kind of go back to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And again, are you saved? I mean, did Jesus Christ just accept you? I mean, did he just receive you like what did he say to you or what did he uh, call you to do okay uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 uh, wow perfect right there okay uh, in verse 21 it says this not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven okay right there okay I don't understand how plain that could be other than to say, this is it. And no one, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, you know, there's a lot of people who go to churches, even in my church, I am their pastor. And still there are so many who say, Lord Jesus, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, but are not entering the kingdom of heaven because they may say it, but they're not doing the will of the father in heaven. All the, uh, no matter how many hundred people I may have, there's going to be people who are going to hear the word, but refuse to deal, do the will of my father in heaven. And again, this is not any way to try to put a burden on people or to make it hard for them, but to say that truly in their heart, if a person says, Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord and savior, and they're not doing what God calls them to do, they're not going to heaven. They're not going to enter in. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, you who practice sin. Go away. If you cannot live in sin, you cannot have a life of sin, and live a life of sin and call Jesus Christ Lord and Savior, live in fornication and drunkenness and, and profanity and do all your thing. Call Jesus Christ Lord and Savior and still be saved. It doesn't matter what any pastor has said to you. It doesn't matter what, how you've been dunked in water or how long you were dunked or even how many times you were dunked. If you want to still live in sin and you don't want to practice the Christian faith and you don't want to do what God calls you to do, that day will come when Jesus will say, I understand you call me Lord, Lord, but you are nothing but a sinner who lives in sin, not a sinner who makes a mistake. I'm not talking to you who make a mistake. I'm not talking to you oh, who are struggling through certain things. I'm talking about you who have refused to live for God, who make excuses why you should not live for God, who make excuses by putting your body, your family, your, your work, your money, your hobbies before God. God will come to you and say, you are nothing but filth. You are going to hell. Guys, this is not exactly what is being preached out there, but this is exactly what the Bible says. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, I think Jesus, Jesus says it very clear uh, by saying, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. In other words, Jesus is saying many are going to go to hell. Many are going to be destroyed. He says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. So I'm not surprised. 
You know, I am not surprised that there are, there are not going to be many who go into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I'm not going to be surprised um, when I say into the kingdom of heaven in the sense that I'm not going to be surprised that many people who aren't called themselves Christians are not going to be there because they have refused to give up their sin. They have refused to follow Jesus Christ wholeheartedly with full, full reverence and, and following of God. The Bible says it's going to be difficult. These days you're looking at mega churches, thousands and thousands of people in a church, thousands of people in a church, and they are listening to the gospel. They're listening to the Bible and, and they're not going to heaven. Majority of them are not going to heaven. Why? Because even though they may hear it, they're not doing what God calls them to do. They're not doing it. So just because you hear it, if you don't do it, there's no salvation. Okay. Jesus says it will be narrow. It'll be narrow and it'll be very difficult. Okay. Let's go to second Timothy or actually just to stay on uh, chronological order. Let's go to first Corinthians chapter six, first Corinthians chapter six. Um, again, I'd like to emphasize to you, emphasize to you, uh, that the gospel that's being preached or the lesson that's being preached here of are you saved is biblical. Okay. You see, we're going through the Bible uh, and I don't want to spend too much time, but if you have any questions, you're more than free to contact me. There are, there are maybe another dozen to two dozen stories in the Bible of Jesus confronting people who have refused to give up their sin and confronting them and telling them that um, they're going to hell, pretty much. Uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, um, even telling people who have been healed to go and sin no more. The adulterous woman who came to Jesus, he says, I forgive you, now go and sin no more. The blind man, he goes, go and sin no more. And he says, if you continue sinning, the, your situation that you were in are gonna, is gonna be double, it's gonna be worse. So go and sin no more. So Jesus tells us to go and sin no more. We cannot be calling ourselves Christians and living a life of sin. We need to go and sin no more. Okay, so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 9. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 9. There we go. 9. Okay, he says this. Do you not know? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? It's a very rhetorical question. Do you, don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. How many people are so deceived by thinking that they're going to heaven? Okay. He says, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators. What's fornicator? Someone who has sex before marriage. Okay. People who live in a sexual lifestyle right now. There are, Christian, there are people who call themselves Christians. They're going to clubs. They're having sex. They're living with people, living with another man or another woman out of wedlock. And they're living in sin. They live with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a fiance. They just, they don't have any thought of repentance but they're just living in sin and they're not thinking about marriage or just having sex. It says fornicators will not inherit. Do not be seen, neither fornicators, okay? Nor idolaters. Idolaters are people who put things before God. There are people, it's so funny, people will go to the gym three to four times a week and exercise. Folks, this is Christians. Christians, so-called Christians, will go to the gym three to four times a week and exercise, but have but only go to church one time a week, only on Sunday, and claim that they don't have time or, or they have a busy schedule, but have no problem going to, to the gym three to four times a week. Okay, these are putting people put put things other things before God. They put their bodies. They worship their bodies. They worship their their own selves. Okay nor adulterers. These are people who have sex outside of marriage. Not that they commit adultery, but they are adulterers. They continue 
continue seeking sexual encounters outside of marriage. They continue in a relationship outside of marriage. It says nor adulterers, okay? Nor homosexuals, okay? Or effeminate, however you may see. All these churches who are accepting homosexuality, saying, oh, homosexuals are gonna be saved. This says homosexuals will not. Nor sodomites, sodomites uh, is, is uh, those who, who have sex through the rectum, okay? Uh, male sexual, male sex through the rectum, okay? On this one it says uh, male homosexuals. This says homosexuals and this one says male homosexuals. Catamites, those submitting to homosexuals, males homosexuals is what we have here. And again, it's in Galatians 5.21, but either way, any type of homosexuality whether it was by prostitute, male to male, female to female, sodomites, these will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. There are people who are Christians and are still getting drunk in the weekends and they claim themselves to be saved. You have gotta be kidding me. Nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. And these are people pointing, well, you know, you're not perfect and you know, you were one of us too. Yeah, you're right. We were one of you, but we're now washed. But you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Okay. So this is the evidence, the evidence of you being washed, the evidence of you being sanctified, the evidence of you being justified in the name of the Lord is that you do not practice these sins. You are no longer a fornicator, an idolater, an adulterer, homosexual, sodomite, thief, covetous, drunkards, rivalers, extortioners, okay? These people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Guys, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you must give these sins up. You cannot be living a life of sin. And if you say, well, I can't give it up, then you're not worthy of him. And when you die on that day of judgment, God is going to judge you and you will be damned to hell. And if you think that you're, well, you know, from now until then, you know, whatever, hell again begins now. Maybe that's why you're living a life of failure. Maybe that's why you're, you're losing in your life. Maybe you can't get things perfect. Maybe you, you have issues in your life because of these. Maybe you can't find peace. You can't find joy. Maybe you're successful monetarily, but you can't find family. You can't find things uh, for, to fulfill, you need to buy the next big thing, the next best thing. Um, again, these are all facts that maybe because you're living in this sin, if you live in this sin, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another text. And I think we're going to conclude with this. Second Timothy chapter three. And uh, please uh, forgive me again. Like I said, there are a lot, a lot of scriptures in here that talk about um, you know, salvation, etc. cetera. But uh, I don't think there's even enough uh, space, you know, to go through there, but, and time. All right, so Perlius times, and this has already been 30 minutes, uh, but it says Perlius time, but know this, that in the last days, Perlius times will come, okay? That means difficult trials times, okay? This says on 3.1, it says uh, Perlius, meaning uh, times of stress, okay? But pearliest times will come for men will be lovers of themselves. We talked about that. You know, people going to the gym now, taking care of yourself, exercising and going to the gym. There's nothing wrong with going to the gym. There's nothing wrong. Even the Bible says that the you know, bodily exercise profits little, but spiritual exercise profits much. OK, those who take care of themselves spiritually. So there's nothing wrong with going to the gym. But when your life in fitness and lover of yourself and your hobbies and all that are more than the love than God. There's a problem with that, folks. They said there'll be lovers of money, work, and they put work first and money first and this first. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. How can you be a Christian and be disobedient to your parents? I've seen teenager Christians uh, yell back at their parents and disobey them and sneak out of the window and and just do their own thing they're disobedient to parents um they're unthankful unholy i mean unthankful look at what you do for people they don't even give thanks anymore they're like hey thanks bro you know people like they act this have a spirit of well you owe me the spirit of 
of uh, almost like debt, like we owed them a debt. So they're going to be unthankful, unholy. Isn't that true these days? People not being holy, set apart for God. Now these days, they watch what they want to watch. They listen to what they want to listen. They listen to rap that's full of profanity, um, regular uh, R&B or any other music that has profanity, even country. They, that have uh, sexual innuendos. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I mean, they're watching movies that are constantly unholy, uh, just really filthy. They've become filthy. They have not, they're not going to be set apart anymore. You, we are set apart as Christians. They're going to be unloving, you know, and, and isn't that true? The world says, oh, we're loving, love, love, love. But, you know, like the homosexual agenda says, love, love. But, you know, the homosexual agenda is one of the most violent of all people, you know, of all things. Oh, love, love. Well, they're going to be unloving, unforgiving. People are going to be unforgiving, unloving, unforgiving. Uh, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. We're already seeing this. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. What's that mean? Saying, oh yeah, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Oh, I love God. I love God. I love God. But continuing to live the way they want to live. They want to live in sin. They want to commit idolatry. They want to live in fornication. They want to get drunk. They want to do whatever they want to do. But why? Because even though they believe there's a God, they believe he has no power over their life. So in other words, I believe there's a God, but he doesn't tell me what to do. Now, they may not say that, but they live it. They live it. He don't tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it. Again, denying its power, denying his authority. And the Bible says, and from such people turn away. Okay. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loading down with sins, led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Gosh, this is so deep and there's so much, so much involved in that, uh, in, in the text of that. Again, it's very important that we understand the text, the scripture of this and forget about what you were taught. And if you were taught according to the Bible, you'll see the Bible is very clear. So let me ask you a question now. Are you saved? Are you saved? Um, maybe you're listening to this go, you know what? I am a Christian, but I am having struggles with sin. And, but I've been praying for God to deliver me from sin. I've been praying to God to help me and deliver me from sin because I'm weak. And I'm here to tell you that if that's you, you're saved. Because your heart is right with God. You want to give up your sin. You're struggling, and that's okay as long as you're struggling and you're fighting through it and, and you're good, you know, but you got to keep fighting. Don't give up. Maybe you say to me, well, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, but, you know, I, I'm in this relationship right now and I can't kick her out or kick him out or, you know, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know what to do and I don't want to marry them. So I'm not sure. Well, I'm here to tell you that even though you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. Um, you need to repent of your sins. God has to be more important to you than your, uh, your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You know, here's what Jesus says. He says, he says it this way. Again, this is another text I didn't bring in. But he says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. I mean, if Jesus... And this is very symbolic, but he's saying, man, if your right hand makes you sin, man, it's better for you to cut it out. He says, it's better for you to go to hell, for heaven, to heaven without a hand or without an eye than to go to hell with your full body. And Jesus is saying the same thing to you. So what? You, don't, you love this person. If you're not willing to marry them and you're not willing to move forward and make your heart right and your relationship with right, then... Get rid of them. You need to move on or they need to get rid of you. You cannot be living a life of sin. Okay, maybe that's you. You know, maybe you're like, well, you know, I, I like my drugs or I like my partying or I like my women or I like my men 
or I like my this or whatever it is that. If that's you, you're not saved. You need to repent. You need to turn away from your sin and follow God. So again, there's two types of people. There's those who say, I love Jesus Christ, but I'm, and I give up my sin, but I'm struggling and I mix up and I mess up. Those are different. That's different than people who say, oh, I love Jesus Christ, but I always, you know, I always make excuses of why I don't go to church. I always make excuses of why I don't, I don't um, uh, read. I always make excuses why I don't, why I, why I live in sin. The, the excuses are not going to bring you into salvation. They're not going to save you. As a matter of fact, those excuses will not work on the time when the Lord returns to judge the living and the dead. So where are you in your life? Who are you? Are you willing to give up everything? The Bible says again, Jesus says, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of me. Not worthy. My name is Pastor Michael Salmon. I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ that you will open your eyes and understand the true meaning. Jesus says it this way. You will know the tree by its fruit. You'll know the tree by its fruit. You know, you can be sincere to God. And I'm sure some of you who are listening say, I'm sincere. I'm sincere to God. I really have sincerity, God. But you can be sincerely wrong, too. If you are sincere, if you really have a heart for God, then you've got to give it all up. Jesus says, give it all up. He who loses himself finds himself. Don't let your pride get in the way. Don't let your money get in the way. Don't let anyone get in the way. Your wife, your mom, your dad, nothing. Let God be number one. If you're not willing to make God number one in your life, then it ain't going to work. Because Jesus is, does not take second place to no one. And again, don't be deceived. Don't let any preacher on TV or any pastor in the pulpit tell you you're going to go to heaven if you have not given up your sin. Any pastor who says, oh, you're saved, it's okay, you know, you're living in sin or whatever, or it's okay, you're living with someone, you're fornicating, or, oh, you always make excuses of why you're not going to church, or you always make excuses of why you're not serving God, or, oh, yeah, that's fine, you're saved, don't worry about it. They're lying to you. They're lying. Don't be deceived. The Bible says idolaters, those who put things before God, will not be saved. So, is there a calling? Is it, is it difficult? Yeah, it's difficult. Jesus even says the way is narrow and straight and narrow. And very few find it. It's completely different than what other people are preaching. Huh? They tell you, oh, everyone can be saved. Everyone can be saved. No, it's difficult. But is it worth it? Yes. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you truly give him your life, it becomes so much easier I always, I always uh, reckon it to a diet. When people look at a diet and, and they say to me, you know, oh, uh, if you've ever been on a diet and you say some things like, I haven't eaten, I haven't drank soda in like three months. At first, soda is very difficult. But after a while, after you haven't drank it, you don't miss it anymore. Same thing with sin. At first, it's very difficult. But after a while, you're not going to miss it anymore. I pray this blesses you. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our information will be on this video. I pray the Lord bless you and give you insight and enlighten you in wisdom and understanding in Him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.